the Soviet Union. These two words make us feel now so. To be honest, now let's talk about creator the leader and the proletariat, who he really was about truth and fiction, how he came to power the cars he used to drive and where he lived, and much, much more. Certainly, we will talk about his attitude towards Ukraine and Ukrainians. In doing so, we will deny Putin's claim that Lenin supposedly created Ukraine. It promises to be very interesting, because that syphilitic man, among the other things, had a very eventful, but short and painful life. To begin with, his real name was Ulyanov, not Lenin. Volodya Ulyanov was born in Simbirsk, a city in Moscow, now Ulyanovsk, on 22nd April 1870. Their family photo, taken in 1879, shows the future leader in an age of only nine. But even that it was obvious from the boy's eyes that he was not good health. He is in the first row of the right. Here's an interesting fact from his childhood. At the time, the future Lenin was a weak and sickly child. One day, when prolonged bouts of malaria caused complication to his lungs of rise fear to his life, doctor recommended to the family that they moved to Italy. They had no money to relocate. It turned out that there was stagnant water in the basement of the house the Ulyanovs rented, which provoked their disease. The problem was solved simply by moving across the street. We should mention that this was only the beginning of his health problems. Nevertheless, in 1887, Volody joined the law faculty of Kazan University. It would seem that the boy was in his way to success. But here's the thing, according to Soviet propaganda. The future good grandfather was expelled for participating in a student meeting. It must also be noted, however, that he was obstinate and in 1891 managed to pass the exams for the law course at St. Petersburg University as an external student. In 1895, Lenin began his political life by founding the League of Struggle for the Emancipation of the Working Class, which sounds pretty nasty. Due to these actions, Volodya was sent to Siberia for three years. In 1900, after his dismal, he traveled abroad and was first published under his nickname Lenin. In 1902, he outlined the main principles of creating a Marxist party and the centralist organization of professional revolutionaries. Through his participations, through his participations, a draft program of such a party was developed, which defined the establishment of the dictatorship of the proletariat as its main goal. The well know the head of Doug with the strike of Anschwander immediately pops into mind. In 19.3, Lenin became the leader of the majority, later Bolsheviks, among the Russian Social Democrats. In 19.3, Lenin becomes the leader of the majority, later Bolsheviks, among the Russian Social Democrats. The year 19.5 sees adoptions of the resolution proposed by Lenin to organize the proletariat to fight the autocracy through amateur prison. In 19.8, the chief proletarian leaves first a decaying Switzerland and then in no less decaying France. After the fall of terrorism to Russia and formulated the Bolsheviks' political platform in the so-called April Thesis, which were approved by the Seven All Russian Conference of the RSDLP Bolsheviks. By it, of course, for socialist revolution. It was in his initiative that the Bolshevik put forward the popular slogans All power to the Soviets, peace to the nations, land to the peasants. As it is now a reasonable people, these were just empty slogans, i.e. and other worlds. The workers were simply dupe, excuse our jargon. In early 1917, Lenin led the preparation for that very revolution. When the provisional government was outrun, the second All-Russian Congress of Soviet adopted Lenin drafts on 26 October. The decree of peace, the decree of land, and the decree of the establishment of the councils of the people's commissars, CPC. As the revolution deepened, the CPC led by Lenin two measures to restructure the foundations of the economy, establishing control, confiscating landowners, land, nationalizing industry, banks, rivals, merchant fleets, and establishing a monopoly of foreign trade. The result was the destruction of the economy. 
There was created the All Russian Extraordinary Commission for Combating Counter Revolution and Sabotage Cheka, and the formation of the regular workers and peasants. Red Army began. As Lenin said, it has come to pass. The outcast the Lumpen, the so-called people's method, come to power. We are by no means different than the Russian Empire. Actually, in our view, Russia is a redundant entity on the world map that should be eliminated as soon as possible. But Lenin himself definitely didn't identify himself as a proletarian, although he was a prominent representative in his own right. It was him who designed the well-known concentration camps. The Richard Victor Morans has worked through a lot of archives and established this fact. His research destroys the statement about concentration camps and the invasion of Nazi Germany, which was established by Soviet propaganda. It was Vladimir Ulyanov Lenin who proposed the idea of creating camps of 9 August 1918 in a telegram to the Panzer Regional Executive Committee. We must organize as transit the protection of selected reliable people, carry out merciless mass terror against gulags, priests and white guards. The doubtful ones should be locked up concentration camp out of town. The camps were officially established by the resolution of the Council of People Commissars of 5 September 1918 on the Red Terror. The first concentration camps appeared on the territory of Ukraine on the autumn of 1920 of Yzlevitgrad, Zhitomir, Katerinoslov, Kyiv, Kremenchuk, Lubny, Mykolaev, Odessa, Alexandrovsk, Poltava, Kharkiv and Chernigiv. Now let us tell you a bit about the condition in which the so-called leader lived. So, it was the summer of 1921, three years of the eight months since the Bolsheviks came to power. The top Bolshevik, Vladimir Ulyanov Lenin, lives on the, the luxuries mansions in the Moscow region, which was taken away from the widow of the manufacturer Sava Morozov. It's a classic example of talking everything and dividing it up. On the other walls, just take it. It's the blood of Russians. What about the Russian? He drives a highly luxurious Delaunay Belleville, which belonged to the last Russian emperor. The leader of world proletariat and his wife have held a dozen of the cars from the royal garage at their service, and there were 75 million francs worth of deposits in Swiss banks in Lenin's name. This obviously dies not much what Lenin had written about, and a Soviet newspaper treated the people to a good grandfather, how Lenin washed down a black rutan with empty boiling water and a piece of sugar. And people believed just as they believed in populist slogans. Now, let's talk about some interesting fact from Lenin's life. For instance, did you know that Lenin had a 148 nicknames? The most common ones to Tulin, Stary, Starist, Frey, Ilyin, Petrov, Mayer and the other 140. Lenin did smoke and was not addicted to alcohol. Well, sometimes he could drink just one mug of beer. But there is a reason why Lenin didn't smoke and it takes us back to his youth. In his childhood and youth, young Lenin was often caught smoking by his mother. She had no idea how to win him of this bad habit. No amount of persuasion worked. Lenin kept smoking. But as his mother said that cigarettes cost a lot of money, which the Ulyana family did not have much of, it became an iron point for the future revolutionary and he never smoked again, being already ill. Lenin was very scared of becoming paralyzed and unable to work. Feeling a stroke coming on, he called Stalin to his room and asked for poison to be given to him in case of paralysis. But Stalin disclaimed this request. It is well known that Lenin had an acute enthusiasm for relationships with a wide variety of women. This is what ruined him. But that's okay. Ilyich was also very fond of routine, but Krupskaya was a poor cook and his mother in law Elizaveta Vasilievna took over. If we continue with the household, then the only place they kept clean was his workspace. What is else was mentioned of the attempts on Lenin's life? That very first now attempt happened on January 1st, 1918, when Lenin's car was shot at. Yet, it was never identified who the killer was or who the customer was. The next incident happened on August 30th, 1919. On that day, Lenin gave a powerful speech at the Mitchelson factory, and then a woman showed him here his car. Lenin was injured. Her name was Fanny Kaplan. A damsel with suspensions passed. 
who surrendered herself. Only this time while the fox began and emerged as a kaplan was a friend Yakov Sverdlov's sister, literally the second person after Lenin. But Leon Trotsky, the People's Commissar of Defense, whose armored train was also allegedly attempted, had known something and decided to take a different direction. Still there were doubts as to whether a very short-sighted socialist revolutionary could give God to Lenin. Perhaps it was an internal power struggle. We have reached the end of the other journey in this either man or creature. According to the official version, Lenin died because of the alias caused by severe overwork and the effects of attempt and his life on August 30, 1919. Nevertheless, neurophysiologist Valery Novoselov, after stating the reader's medical diary, claims that he died of neurosyphilis. He said that, according to the notes, Lenin had been showing strange behavior for more than a year and a half before his death. A quote from diary, 30 May 1922, the patient has trouble saying his same phrase. He is out of words, yawning constantly. He wanted to go to the bathroom to wash his face. He doesn't know how to use a toothbrush. At first, he took the toothbrush the other side, which bristles in his hands and looked in this amazement. Only when nurse took the brush, dipped in powder and brought it to his mouth to start brushing his teeth properly. Meanwhile, less than a week before his death, Ilyich was in the forest. There is a record on this day, January 16, 1924. Patient spent the day in the wood hunting. The last notation on the day of Vladimir Lenin's death of January 21, 1924, says that he slept almost all day was calm. His breathing was anyone and jerkly, and there was vomiting. Sudden congestion of head to crimson color of the face Sudden respiratory failure of 6.50 pm. Head tilted back, face become pale. Immediate artificial respiration and came for alum 2.0. It took 30 minutes of artificial respiration, but it was unsuccessful. This hyperemia lasted for 1 minute and was replaced by daisy pallor. This was registered at 6.50 pm. By professors Fester, Osipov and Yelistratov. Was written in the diary. He is the way. Certainly, we will also touch upon Lenin's attitude towards Ukraine. Lenin insisted in keeping the industrialized Donbas as part of Ukraine considered Russians and Ukrainians as separate peoples who deserved the own republic within the Soviet Union. In 1917, he knew that Russians and Ukrainians were separate nations and that the only way for the revolution was to accept this difference. Lenin accepted the formal independence of Ukraine. He knew that Ukraine had to be kept close to him, according to his own words. Without Ukraine, breed this is no Russia. But it would have been extremely formal and illusory independence of Ukraine. Nothing would have changed in fact. Direct speech of Illich. Only clerics of bourgeois can talk about national clutched at all. The working masses can only talk about the international culture of the world labor movement. Only such a culture means full, genuine, sincere equality of nations, the absence of national oppression and the realization of democracy. Only the unity of merger of workers of the all nation in all workers, organization in the struggle against capital leads to the solution of the national question. So, in other words, become the faceless, mass and everything will be okay. Yet Putin believes that Ukraine was created by Lenin because in his mind, before Lenin ideas, Ukraine just didn't exit, definitely a falsehood. So, please help us debunk this lie by sharing our video, giving them a thumbs up and being active in the comments.